Oh, hey. <laughs> okay. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about how games are made. So if you're curious and wondering, what's all this jargon in game development all about? What even is game development? How does it work? Where do I start? This is a great video for you. I'm going to go through a lot of key things that you're going to need to know and understand to speak about departments and roles and who does what and how it gets done at the end of the day. Okay, so diving right into it, what are departments? Now, a department is a portion or a single skill needed in the overall game development. Sometimes we shorten the term game development into game dev, and we might call people who work in game dev game devs or game developers for short. It's a lot of uh, slang that gets thrown around. But the point is that each game dev is somebody who has a certain skill set. And there's many different skill sets to make a game, especially if you're working on a AAA game. Now, AAA is basically a big project with a lot of people working on it and a lot of money behind it to make it really high quality. Something like an indie development is typically referring to something that is much smaller with just a couple of people or oftentimes even one person. If you take Minecraft, for example, that game was started by just one person originally, and it was an indie development. And nowadays it's AAA development because it has a much bigger team behind it, much bigger funding, et cetera, et cetera. So games are made in a variety of ways, as you can imagine, whether you have one person working on it or hundreds of people working on it, there's going to be lots of different techniques and methods and pipelines associated with that. When I'm talking about a pipeline, that's basically what your factory looks like. How are you going to assemble these things? What are your different departments? What order is the product going to go through as it moves from one stage to another? Right? Okay. So we've got our departments in game development, working in a production pipeline. Are you with me so far? Okay, good. Because we're going to dive right into what these different departments are all about. Now, when I started at Riot Games back in 2014 and ended up staying there for about six years, I got really familiar with how a AAA development pipeline operates. There's all these different departments. You've got the engineers, the 3D artists, the animators, the quality assurance people. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each of these and more in this video and what they all do, how they all work together, and how you, as a visual effects artist, are going to need to work with them. So I want to start with engineering because this is really the backbone of the game. A game cannot run without an engineering team. So engineering basically is talking about the code of the game. These are people who they work in text editors a lot of the times. Sometimes there's some things called visual scripting in games where you can work inside of what's called a game engine. That is to say something like Unreal Engine or Unity Engine, which is the mind of the game. And the engineer gets in there and they edit the code. They edit the behaviors and the way the game acts both for the user and also over on the server side. So they're doing a lot of really technical stuff, making the game come alive and, and have all the different component parts functional. Now, if the game was only code, that would be a very non-visual experience. And actually there have been games in the past called MUDs, um, which are these online environments where people go through with only text and they go on a complete adventure. And if there's any visuals, those visuals are just made up of text. So an engineer could basically make a mud all by themselves without touching any artistic tools at all. However, a lot of times there needs to be some art in there. And so the engineers are going to work closely with a tech artist. Now, a tech artist or technical artist is somebody who combines the world of engineering and coding with the world of art. And it's a very broad category of skills being a tech artist, because depending on the game you're working on, sometimes you might be working with the materials in the game, the lights, the 3D models, the motion, um, how things are rigged, and on and on. Now, as a VFX artist, I love working with a tech artist because they allow me to do my job by providing me with the tools to create artwork 
that can function on top of the code that the engineers made. So a tech artist is a sort of a bridge builder. They connect the two worlds, the tech world and the art world together. Okay, so you've got an engineer and a tech artist working together to sort of getting the, the bones of the game going. It's also critical that we have a game designer. Now, you may have heard the word design before in terms of things like graphic design or visual design. When we're talking about a game designer, this is not an artist necessarily. This is somebody who is designing the flow of how the game is gonna play itself. So they're the ones in charge of making sure the game is fun. They're gonna come up with a design document that outlines what the game is all about, how it functions, um, what's gonna be so great about the experience. And they're gonna work closely with the engineers, the tech artists, and the artists to ensure that the final experience for the player is meet, living up to the goals that they originally had set. So between your engineering team, your tech art team, and your game designer, you're starting to get the format to build the bones of the game in a really strong way. Then we have our concept artist friends, and these are individuals who develop the art for the game. So they're gonna come out with the pictures and the still images that will later be translated into fully functioning assets inside the game. A concept artist is not somebody who implements the art in the game. They, they don't create the art that actually lives in the game. They create pictures and imagery that inspire the rest of the art team to later come in and build some really cool stuff. The concept artist is responsible for a lot of the vision of the game and what it can be. It's a concept, it's, it's all in your mind, but it's conveyed in a conceptual way so that the whole team can get behind it and it's not just in that person's brain anymore of what this thing could look like. So this is all a part of the early or pre-production phase of the game dev pipeline. Are you with me so far? All right, we've got engineers, tech artists, concept artists, and game designers all working together to build the basis of a game. We know what it's gonna look like. We know how we're gonna put it together. And then we have the whole rest of the art department. So concept art is the first that I've mentioned that's a part of the art department. You could say that tech art's a part of that too. Depending on the team, they're either more technical or artsy, it just really varies. So then we get into things like 3D modeling. Now, we'll often refer to these as 3D character artists or 3D environment artists. There's also 3D prop artists, 3D vehicle artists, weapon artists, those kinds of things. These individuals build things in three dimensions. They make the object and they make it so that it works and looks good from the camera angle so that it can fully function in the game and operate the way that it needs to. After that, they hand that off to a rigging artist or a rigger, somebody who loads it up with bones and the ability to move and animate. Sometimes this is a tech artist who moonlights as a rigging artist or as a rigger. Other times they have dedicated riggers who go in and put the bones in the characters and uh, they allow for the different uh, facial expressions to work. Also at this phase, a tech artist might do things like update the materials on the character so that they can do some cool things in animation, like if they have glowing armor or you know a weapon that needs to do a very specific thing when the player does a very specific thing. And they'll hook it all up so that the motion is gonna work with the game code. After that, of course, it goes to an animator. So the animator is gonna take this fully rigged model that was built by another artist and then rigged by another artist, and they're gonna bring that thing to life. They're gonna add motion, they're gonna make it run, swing a sword, shoot a gun, get hit by a gun, whatever it is that's happening in the game, they're gonna make that come to life with actual motion. And so they're creating all these motion assets. The engineering and tech art teams are making sure that those assets that are animating around play at the correct times when the player asks it to play. So when you push the run forward button, it's gonna play the run animation, right? And then we have other artists as well. We have the environment artists that are building the whole environment out. We have the user interface artists or UI artists for short, that's creating the heads up display or HUD or HUD for short, we often call it. That's all the little buttons and indicators that are playing around your screen to show you how much health you have, 
um, how many bullets you have left, like how long until the enemy uh, is going to faint from shooting them with lots of these bullets <laughs> or whatever it might be. Those all show up in the user interface or the HUD and there's a special artist just for that. And then we come to visual effects. So VFX comes close to the end of the pipeline. There's still a couple other steps that I'll get to after that, but it's the job of a VFX artist to take all these other things, the beautiful environment, the beautiful characters and the animation and the user interface and dress it up with motion and activity and satisfaction. So we're doing the particle systems, we're doing the fire, the magic, the water, everything that's animating and interacting with these other elements as you're playing the game. And it really adds an extra layer of life to the whole thing. It creates an experience that builds clarity and makes things feel, well, just really, really satisfying at the end of the day. Without effects in a game, it feels a bit empty, it feels a bit dry, and so effects comes along and dresses that up. That's not to say the other artists are not as important. Certainly every piece of the pipeline, every department has their part to play to make this thing come together. And some games index higher on different departments. For example, you might have a game that counts on gorgeous and sweeping environmental landscapes to drive the immersion and the satisfaction in the gameplay. Another game might have really snappy character animations where it's just very responsive. It feels amazing to move as a character. Other games might have over the top effects that are just exploding all over the place. There's so much satisfying combat. And that really is the basis of what drives the game design. So different games have different sizes of departments and they focus in different areas. Okay, so after effects, we've got the audio department. Now, these individuals are amazing, and they're really the unsung heroes, literally, because it's audio, um, because oftentimes we don't acknowledge that the sound design that's coming through our headphones or our speakers plays a massive part in the immersion that we're experiencing. <laughs> In fact, if you go back and watch some of your, of your favorite movies and try to um, reimagine what some amazing action sequence looked like, and you pay close attention to what it sounds like, you'll realize that a lot of what you remember came through those headphones or through those speakers. I declare war. On anybody standing in the way of what I dreamed for, how could you ignore? And that's because the audio department is really tied in after everything else is done, including effects. They're tied into what's happening visually, and their job is to heighten that even more. A lot of times these individuals are also musicians. They have a good sense of rhythm. They love tinkering around with different layers of sound. They like going out and like recording crazy things, shattering, breaking, exploding, thudding, whatever. They have a lot of fun recording fresh sounds, working from audio libraries and mixing it all together to create a rich audio experience. Okay, so at the very end of the pipeline, we have our QA department or quality assurance. And these individuals are the game testers. So they go through and they test the game. Now you may wanna be a game tester because you're like, hey, I wanna play games for a living. Well, being a QA specialist doesn't necessarily mean just playing all day. These people are tasked with the job of finding what's broken in the game, finding what doesn't work. And they're also playing this game through all stages of its development, even when it's not that fun to play. It doesn't quite have all the working pieces yet, but it's their job to test things out, see if it's performing properly for the player, and then giving those notes and feedback to the team and saying, hey, the thing you built, it's broken. It's not working. You need to fix these things. So take a look at that. They'll play the same level countless times over and over and over again to try and find the one edge case where things might break. 
Okay, so that's a pipeline. <laughs> now, I haven't necessarily covered every role. And if you're watching this video and there's a role that you play that I didn't mention, I apologize. Uh, please either leave a message below, like commenting about, hey, you left this out so that other people can be aware of what other jobs there are in the industry. But just so you know, as you're looking at being a game developer, there's a wide array of opportunities for you in the development process. All of these things that I've been talking about today, these are just the people who are building things in the game. There's also people who oversee production. We call them producers, or we might call them development managers or product owners. There's a lot of terms for it, but essentially these are the leaders who guide the overall process to ensure that things get done on time, that they get done under budget, that they get got to the player. So even if you're more of like a management type person, there's also jobs in those areas as well in the games industry for you. Okay, so that's the pipeline. That's the different departments. I hope you learned a lot in this video and I'll catch you again in the next video.